What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. I'm so excited to be sitting in front of the camera again, you guys. You can probably still hear in my voice. I've been really sick. It's been weeks now that I've had this consistent cold. Not COVID, but I am out of breath, almost like COVID. It's a pretty bad cough and I'm just very tired. So it's very similar to COVID, but it's not. And it just won't go away. It's so strange. Maybe it's just stress, that's what my mother-in-law thinks. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if it is. You guys know I have a lot going on in my life. So anyway, today's video is gonna be super easy, but it is by far the question I get asked the most across all of my social media, and that is how do I get my patina so black? And to be straight up with you guys, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing so differently than everybody else that makes my patina as black as it is. It is very black, I acknowledge that. So, Today, I'm just gonna kind of go through what I suspect may be contributing to it and how I do it exactly. So, if that sounds like something you're into, let's just go ahead and get started. But, like I said, a lot has been going on. I've been sick and I've got a new member to the family. So, why don't I show her to you guys really quick? It's not a dog. Her name is Solstice. Let me go get her. Aww. Okay, guys, I gotta make this quick because she was just sleeping <laughs> and they're bright filming lights in here. This is Solstice, she's about a 10 week old kitten now. She has been in the family for maybe two weeks now, not even, but everybody's getting along. The girls, the chihuahuas are doing so good with her. They're very, very patient. Nova just wants to play with her. She, The kitten is still a little bit small for that, so I'm trying to hold off on that, but she's an adorable cat. She's got a crink little tail. She was born with it and it is pretty intense of a crank in her tail so it's almost hard to read this cat's body language and i haven't had a cat since i was a little kid so i'm definitely learning the ways of being a cat mom this is her favorite place to be and i don't know all you cat moms out there can tell me i don't know if this is a bad thing or not she wants to be right here all the time she wants to be held snuggled up by my neck and i don't know if i shouldn't be doing that like is that going to make her not independent? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm a new cat owner. I've researched as much as I can. She's a happy girl. She's doing very well. Okay, she's tired. I'm going to go put her back on the couch. Okay, be right back. Okay, so elephant in the room. I probably said on this channel before that I am not a cat person. I guess I'm a cat person now. I, I was looking for an all black cat. But when I saw her, I saw her half and half face. It reminded me of a Halloween cat. She looks just like Nova. Her and Nova look so, so similar. So I think she fits right in. Zach named her Solstice, like Summer Solstice. I think that's absolutely perfect. So yeah, that's our new member to the family. So anyways, before I keep blabbing on too much, like I said, today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I get my patina so black or how I think I get my patina so black. So if that sounds like something you guys are into, Let's get started. That was a left hand snap that felt super weird. That's better. <laughs> oh, and really quick, you guys, when I was just up in front of the camera, I don't know if you noticed, I'm fully letting my eyebrows grow in because I want to see what they look like fully natural. That's like the new thing, natural brows. And I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen like my full adult brows. And I feel like I have very 90s brows right now. So if you see the chaotic nature of them it's because i haven't plucked them in weeks but anyways letting the eyebrows grow out so um just disregard that chaos all right let's get started okay guys so i zoomed you in a little bit closer and right here i've got a little scrap piece of glass that i just cut up and ran some solder lines on really quick that way i can actually show you guys how i physically apply my patina and you guys can see for yourself but before we get into that i want to talk about my three main points now just like in all of my videos, anybody's videos on the internet, this is all my opinion. So if you disagree, leave it in the comments below. We all have different ways of doing things. Everything works differently for everybody. As long as we get to the same end result, it doesn't matter how we got there. So again, these are all my opinions. And I think these are the three main reasons or the three main contributing factors as to why your patina may not look as black as mine does. So number one and most important on the list, your solder. I know it sucks now more than ever, paying up for solder is kind of inevitable, so trying to save where you can is important, but when we're talking about specific things like how your patina lays on top of your solder or how smooth your beads run, 
talking about the reality of you get what you pay for is important and you guys have heard me say this many times before the phrase you get what you pay for nine times out of ten runs true and again i know it stinks we're paying upwards of 250 dollars now for 10 pounds of solder it's a lot i understand that but it's true you get what you pay for so i'm going to put a list of all of my favorite solders on the screen right here and we'll start with my favorites so the first few that I'm going to say are going to be my favorites and then everything else on the list are kind of all grouped together. I wouldn't pick one over the other. So number one on the list, I love Canfield solder. Canfield solder is just so smooth, so beautiful, takes patina so well, very low imperfections, absolutely love it. Chef's kiss, love Canfield solder. So I also love VWM. I really, really like VWM solder. I also like Victory and Eagle solder. So those are my top four. Beyond that, we have Avro, we have Amorway, Artist Pure, Mastercraft, and the list goes on. So I think the longer you guys are soldering, the easier it is to kind of figure out what solders you like and what solders you don't. And as you're kind of soldering, of course, depending on the flux you use, you're using a good flux, you will physically see all of the imperfections of the solder coming to the surface as you're soldering. So. You'll get to know it. I know it seems overwhelming, but if you're new to this craft, just take my word with a grain of salt. I personally like Canfield. I know it's more expensive, but it is what it is. Love Canfield, love VWM, love Eagle Solder, Victory, even Averill. I like all of those. And again, we've got Amorway, Artist Pure, and Mastercraft. So I would say, again, you get what you pay for. Getting a good solder is just as important as getting good tools for any craft or any art that you have out there. So moving on, number one, good solder. Number two, good flux. So you guys have heard me say before, I hate paste flux. I do not like gel flux. The only flux I like is liquid. I like a very thin liquid flux because it does not make a mess and it does not leave a nasty sticky residue when you are done. When we're finished soldering our pieces, it is important to thoroughly clean it before you apply any extra polish or patina you want to clean it as well as you can and using something like a very lightweight thin flux is going to help assist in that if you're using one of those wicked thick paste flux that blows everywhere as you're soldering and that leaves that nasty gel sticky residue when you're done soldering washing it away isn't going to be as effortless as it is with a thin flux I just, I, you cannot go wrong with Novacan. If Novacan brand made everything, I would buy it in Novacan. I love them, I trust them. That's why I use their patina as well. But again, this flux, you just cannot beat it. You get what you pay for it. Don't grab some random flux from the hobby store and expect it to work magic. Just don't. That's the reality of the situation. So again, number one, good solder. Number two, good flux. And number three, Good patina so once again I've got Nova can patina here and specifically today we're talking about black patina so yes there are all different kinds of patinas for different kinds of metals there are different colors of patina but specifically today we're talking about lead solder patina and black because that's the question I get the most how do I get my patina so black so using a good patina is going to be important on top of using a good flux on top of using a really good solder if you can physically see imperfections stuck within your solder bead, of course, that's not going to pick up patina like it should. It needs to be smooth. It needs to be perfect in a sense, or as, as perfect as you can get it. You don't want to see any weird mixed metals or random pieces of unidentified objects within your solder. You want it to be very smooth, very silver, bright and shiny just from washing it. So now let's talk about prepping it for patina. Again, this is another very, very important step. After you're done finishing your piece and you're getting ready to patina it, you obviously have to clean it and you've got to clean it well. So again, you guys have heard me say before, I don't use any particular products. I don't even use flux remover. I don't use polish. I just take my piece to the sink because I've got city water. Again, if you have well water, you've got to be careful with what chemicals you can and cannot wash down the sink. Always read directions, always do your research, but for the sake of me, I will bring it right to my sink and I wash it with warm, soapy water using Dawn dish soap and that's it. I do not have problems with white mold. I don't have issues anywhere. I use warm water 
and Dawn dish soap and that works beautifully. I think the amount of grease removing power that Dawn dish soap has creates such a perfect surface for applying patina or polish, whatever it is that you're doing, you just can't beat it. And again, you guys have heard me mention before that I think a lot of these product, products out there like the flux removers and the solder polish and stuff like that, it just feels very almost gimmicky to me and unnecessary. Dawn dish soap is always what I've used and it most likely will always be what I use. You just cannot beat that clean. It is squeaky clean, patina takes so well. So that's what we're gonna do next. Now, we've gone through all of those things. We've got my little scrap piece right here. It has been scrubbed. So I take warm water, Dawn dish soap, and a nice scrubby brush and scrub the whole surface down. Just a quick scrubby brush on the front, scrubby brush on the back, all my edges, and then rinse it off in warm soapy water. And it is a crystal clean piece of stained glass. So now let's get to actually patinating it. I'm gonna zoom you guys in even closer, give you my overhead view, and I'll show you exactly how I apply it. It's no magic here, I promise. Alrighty guys, like I mentioned, no magic here. I've got my piece on a basic paper towel. I've got my plastic handle toothbrush and of course my Novacan black patina. So really quick before we get to patinaing, I've got really long nails, you guys know this. If your skin is going to come in contact with this patina, you need to wear gloves. You absolutely have to wear gloves. Like I always tell you guys, read the directions, use common sense, vapor harmful, poison, causes severe burns. Be careful with this stuff, you guys. Use your common sense. If you don't got two inch nails, wear gloves. So now, like I mentioned, I've got my perfectly clean piece of glass here. As you can see, it is absolutely spotless. You can see how shiny that silver solder looks. Nice, beautiful, smooth beads. There are no weird imperfections or discoloration within that solder. There's no weird flakes or anything. This is just purely cleaned with warm, soapy Dawn dish soap water, and that's it. I've given it a good scrub, and it is ready to go. So another important thing that I think makes all the difference, just like it says in the directions, apply until you get the desired finish you want. Be generous with your patina. If you use a tiny bit of patina, if you're stingy with your patina, you're gonna get not the best look. So I soak my brush in that patina and I pour it into the cap because you don't know if you're gonna accidentally knock this entire bottle over. I've done it many times. So I soak my brush and generously coat this solder in patina and immediately look at how black that is. It cannot get blacker than that because my brush is absolutely soaked in patina. It's got plenty of chemical on there to really do its job and start working on the metal. If you are stingy with the patina, you're gonna get a stingy looking result. Look at how black that is. You cannot beat that. It does not get blacker than that. That is black as night. So again, let's look at the back here. So normally what I would do is take my brush and dip it off into my paper towel. Do you see how brown and yucky that looks? That's because that's built up on my brush from the front. It's a chemical reaction happening here. So I wanna get all that yucky stuff off my brush and I'm gonna, gonna dip back into nice fresh patina and I'm gonna do the same thing, guys. I am generously, generously coating this solder with that liquid patina. It's as easy as that. If you clean your surface properly, this is exactly what your patina should look like. You're using good solder, you're using good products, you're cleaning it properly, you're being generous with the patina. It is gonna look just just as black as mine does. There's no reason why it shouldn't. And if you start to think that it's getting a little bit lighter, maybe it's starting to have like a brown hue or something, just take your brush and dip it off again. See how black and cruddy and gross that looks? Dip your brush off again and go back into fresh patina and you're golden, you're good to go. Look at how black that looks. Again, you cannot get blacker than that. It's physically impossible. That is a beautiful looking patina. So I'm going to take the excess here, pour it back into the bottle. I'm gonna dry the inside of the cap out because if you don't do that, it will start spilling down the bottle when you put it on. 
dry my brush off and I'm gonna take this again right to my sink because I have city water. I can do that here. I don't have a well system and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to very generously with Dawn dish soap, give this another good warm soapy scrubby bath and I'll be right back. All right, see how soapy this is guys? I just wanted to show you really quick how soapy I get my pieces. Again, this is Dawn dish soap and I'm using a soft bristle scrubby brush and I am scrubbing this piece down with plenty of Dawn dish soap and warm soapy water. Alrighty guys, that is it. Fresh out of the sink, this is no polish, no magic here. Look at how beautifully dark black and smooth and shiny our solder lines look. They look fantastic, you cannot beat that. Hopefully you picked up some type of tip or maybe something that you were forgetting to do before applying your patina, so I hope this video was helpful. But yeah, I pretty much do everything the same way the rest of you do. I apply my patina one brush stroke at a time. Alrighty guys, that's it for today's video, so as always, Thank you so much for watching. Really quick before I go, I just want to say I'm sorry for missing last week's video, but ultimately YouTube is a full-time job. It is more than a full-time job, and you guys already know I have one of those being self-employed artists, so just trying to find that sweet spot of adding another full-time job onto my already very full-time job is just very, very difficult. So please be patient with me guys. Just know I'm always gonna be on YouTube. I'm trying as hard as I can. I always wanna film for you guys and upload for you guys. And so many of you guys always say it feels like we are friends and I feel that too. Like I mentioned before, I work from home and I have for a very long time. All I have is parasocial relationships or whatever it is that you guys want to label it. You guys mean a lot to me. I love talking to you guys. You're the reason I do this. That's why I ask at the end of all of my videos, what do you wanna see next? Because I want to know. I want to know what do you guys enjoy watching. It makes me happy to make you guys happy. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Like this video if you did. Comment down below. Let me know what do you want to see next. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh my god, I'm so out of breath. Why am I so out of breath? Oh yeah, because I'm sick as fuck.